Let's take a look at some things you'll want to consider when reconfiguring a DBE20 style mini mobile transceiver. Hi, and welcome to the Gadget Talk channel, where we do reviews and how-tos on a variety of electronic gadgets that catch my eye. In this video, we're going to take a deep dive into what you'll want to know if you are considering reconfiguring a DB20 or any tone 779 style mini mobile transceiver. As always, if you find this video helpful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. As you may have noticed, many Chinese radios find their way to the market with different brand names and configurations. One such radio is known as the Anytone 779, the Redivus RA25 GMRS, the Redivus RA25 Dual Band, the Radiotity DB20G GMRS, and the Radiotity DB20 UV ham radio. All are the same radio. I first noticed this when I did a review of the DB20 a while back and was amused that the power on screen said any tone. A couple of months back, other radio reviewers posted videos noting that the radio had a hidden menu that allowed you to configure the radio as a US GMRS radio, as well as an amateur radio with several different transmit ranges, depending upon where in the world you were located and what your country's two meter and 70 centimeter band limits were. While it's not hard to reset the radio to one of these other functions, there are a couple of things you'll want to be aware of. First, let's take a quick look at the reset process. It's pretty easy. With the radio connected to a power source, press and hold the VM button while turning on the radio. When it powers on, it will show a menu with the radio's current mode. At this point, you can change mode settings by pressing the up and down buttons on the radio. Note that some of the settings don't seem to change, but if you look closely, you'll notice at least one band limit will change, if only by a small amount. When you have the frequency range you want displayed, simply turn off the radio. When you turn the radio back on, the new mode will be active. One of the things you need to keep in mind when resetting the radio is that the programming you've done in the previous mode will be erased. After a reset, everything will be blank. That means if you're considering going back and forth between, say, a GMRS configuration and a HAM configuration, you'll need to use the programming software which is different for each mode, to save your program to write back to the radio after you switch back. Another thing to notice is that Redivus currently doesn't include a programming cable. Your best bet would be to get your radio from Radiotity as they include a programming cable with both their GMRS and HAM versions of the radio. Now, speaking of programming, Radiotity has the programming software for the DB20G version on its download page. I'll link to my DB20G review in the description where I demo the CPS. What gets a little trickier is getting the CPS for the HAM version. A quick look at the Anytone website's download page shows lots of CPS packages, but none for the AT779UV. Same with the Radiotities download page on their website. I found that a little unusual in that they are pretty good about having the CPS for their radios freely available. Perhaps it's just not posted yet as the DB20UV is a fairly new offering. I ended up getting the software from the Moonraker website in the UK. The YouTube channel TechMinds did a review of the ham version of the radio and showed how to download it from the Moonraker site. When I used the CPS from Redivus, I got a warning that the radio had replied with a different model name and 
did I want to override it? Not entirely sure what that all meant, I chose to go with the Moonraker software since my DB20G powered up with the Anytone splash screen. Here's a quick look at the Anytone CPS. As with all CPSs, you'll need to plug the cable into the radio at one end and your computer's USB port at the other. In this case, the radio end of the cable goes into the microphone socket. So here we have the AT779UV CPS displayed here on the computer screen. And as we do with all of these, we need to start with our device manager. And so let me drag that in. And what we're going to be looking for here is the port setting. And we want to see what port the computer assigned to the USB to serial COM port. And in my case, it was COM9. And so that's what we're going to be setting here in the software. So when we look at the software across the top, it's the typical Windows drop-down menus, you know, new, open, save, uh, model information, uh, the various uh, editing screens to make changes to this radio. In the set command, we're going to set our language. In this case, it's going to be English uh, and program. We're going to do what, what we want to view. In this case, we've got the status and the toolbar, which is this over here and then we have a help about. So we're going to start by going over here to set. We're going to set our COM port. Uh, you recall that we had COM port 9. That's what's shown here. So we're going to go OK. Uh, next, we're going to go over to Program, and we are going to read from the radio. Now, I've done some programming already, so that's what you're going to see when this comes up. Do you want to read from the radio? Yes, we do. And so here is the programming I've already done. Um, we're going to start here on the channel uh, display. And so you can see we've got the receive and transmit frequency. I've given them a name, step, spacing, all of that kind of stuff. Now to program here, it's really pretty easy. You can just uh, basically start by double clicking here, uh, type in uh, frequency. So let's type in the, that 27 one. We'll just duplicate it. So 443. Point one two five zero. Uh, we'll click out of that, and then you see everything fills in. Uh, not everything that we want necessarily. So if we want to go to high uh, power, we can double click there. We get a drop down. We can go high, middle, or low. Uh, here, this is not the right frequency. We want uh, a repeater frequency. So we'll double click here, and we'll change that to an eight to get the proper offset. And then we put a name in here, double click. We can type a name that was in Pace in Arizona. So we'll duplicate that. Um, and then the various other things. Now, if we click over here, we can get a display that shows all of that same information in a window uh, and a couple of other things. So. Uh, we can see that we've got a squelch mode set. Uh, the signaling is off. We don't have a CTCSS code, which we're going to need for a repeater. And so we see over here it was uh, 100. So again, we could double click here and get a drop down, or we can go to this window display and our encode CTCSS is 100. Select that. And then all of these other uh, options are available to include not transmitting at all, uh, skipping this when we're scanning, um, the talk around mode, and that kind of thing. So uh, if we're done with that, we can click OK. And so now we've got this channel programmed. And it's really easy as that. The downside is there's really not a way to import stuff with the CPS, but the programming is not too difficult. Now to delete this, I'm going to double click here, hit delete, click out and it all goes away. Now in the function setup, we get another display. And in this case, um, we can set up our opening screen. And I've got this set to come up with my amateur call sign, the display name, I want it to be name, as opposed to frequency or channel. The upper register I can put in as either VFO or memory. I have it in memory. The lower register is either VFO or memory. Again, I have it in uh, memory. Um, I've got um, channels set when it comes on, 
squelch level, backlight, all of these things are available here in the function setup menu. In DTMF, it allows me to put in DTMF information. If I'm going to be using the DTMF function, I am not. Same with two-tone or five-tone signaling that's available here. Oftentimes, that's commercial related, so um, we just leave that blank. Um, information on scanning channels, so we can have the scan mode off or on. Uh, the priority channels, that kind of thing is available here. Emergency information, uh, you can set the alarm. I've got the alarm just set for the alarm so it'll sound on the radio. I really don't want to use it. Um, and so uh, I've got that here. We've got a communications note that we can put in a caller ID and a name if we're going to make um, direct calls. Again, don't use that with typical radio usage. And then an embedded message we can put in um, here. And so there's a lot of stuff that's available on the radio that really doesn't apply. But those are the various functions that you can set up programming here. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go to model information. And here I can make some choices in terms of um, my frequencies. And so uh, it's UHF, you know, 420 to 450, VHF 144 to 148. That's what I have set. That's the U.S. ham bands. But there are other frequency ranges depending upon where uh, you are in the world. And so those are here and you would make the appropriate choices um, to include the U.S. GMRS mode, which you can access via that same um, uh, hidden menu that this video has been about. So in this case, I'm going to be using the UHF 420 to 450 and VHF 144 to 148. So there we have it. At this point then, I would simply save and I would hit save as and I would give it a name. And for me, as you can see with this one that I previously saved, I gave it the year, the month, the date, and the radio. And it saves it with a .dat file. Okay, so in this case, I've already saved it. I'm not going to save it, um, but I would recommend doing that. And I would recommend doing that for if you're using this as a GMRS radio also to save it separately as GMRS for you when you switch back and forth. And so at this point then, I'm going to go back to program. I'm going to write to the radio, go to OK. And now I'm writing the data back to the radio. The radio on the screen says writing. And it takes only a moment to complete the write. And now I've completed that. The radio reboot. And all of that information is now in the radio in its um, ham radio version. Programming from the radio's faceplate and microphone is the same as described in the review of the DB20G. Again, I'll link to that below and in the end card to this video. The last thing I'll mention is power output. In this clip, I've got the DB20 set as a ham radio. I was pleased with the power output as measured on my MFJ874 going into a dummy load. With the radio set to a UHF frequency and high power, as you can see, it output 20 watts on the 200 watt arc, which is the third from the bottom. With a VHF frequency set, it output 25 watts. Hopefully, this has given you some insight into using the hidden menu on this radio and a couple of things you'll want to do before changing modes. There are a couple of biggies. First, make sure you have a programming cable and save your configurations for both GMRS and HAM mode so you can easily revert back if you want to switch back and forth without doing a bunch of reprogramming. Next, search and find the right CPS for the ham version. If you have an AnyTone radio or one of the radios from Radiodity, use the AnyTone CPS. If you have a Redivus branded radio, start with the Redivus CPS to see if that works. It should. So, 
There you have it. The hidden menu on the radio is pretty cool, but as you've seen, it's not as easy as just selecting a new mode. Join me over here where we'll go through the programming and operations of the radio in its DB20G configuration. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. I'll see you next time. 73, and thanks for watching.